sorry. Um, anyways, Paul just gave me a note that, that we weren't recording, so it's, uh, it is recording now. Um, <laughs> anyway, the, the point is, as you said, Angela, that um, post your questions in, in the page. Um, we do have quite a few practitioners in the Team Box Nation page, but we also can email to practitioners at boxlife.com. Right, so that is an email that you can send as well. Um, but just to quickly review, because we had the recording off there for a few minutes, um, Angela, can you quickly just review what we talked about, just point by point, uh, sort of the things that we deal with? A, don't ask, don't answer if you don't know. Yeah, just be authentic and be real, and don't don't make up an answer, so that other associates don't have to struggle to get product on other people because people talk and if they have a negative experience, they're going to talk. So if they don't feel like you're being authentic and you don't 100% know the answer, just tell them that you're going to find out the answer for them. And that will mean more to them than you feeding them a line of crap. Yeah. Um, let your, Customers know it's okay to not wear the technology uh, straight. They may get sore. They may feel dizzy. Everything's changing in the brain and the body, um, the way it's using itself, and how the brain is trying to fix the disconnect in there. Um, the third question we didn't get to yet is if their feet are burning. And I get this a lot. Um, their feet feel like they're on fire or they feel like they have pins and needles. Um, these are typically people with neuropathy. They could also, if they don't have neuropathy, we've had some people that um, don't wash their socks first and have a bit of a reaction. So it's important that if they don't have neuropathy and they're feeling a burning, make sure that they've washed their socks. Um, but as far as the neuropathy goes, they probably haven't felt their feet in a really long time. And this is a conversation to have with them. Say, well, have you felt your feet in a while? Um, usually the answer is no. So that they're, the fact that they're feeling burning is a good thing because they're actually feeling something. So if they can get over that hump and kind of deal with feeling that pins and needles or the burning, they're gonna be so much better off because it's going to go away they'll have feeling in their feet and that the, the burning is gonna go away. But again, if it gets too intense, same thing, let the body re reset, take the technology off and let the body reset and then put the technology back on. Yeah, I think it's um, a great point what Carla made um, here, Angela, that sometimes um, people's focus becomes all about the socks and do not realize a sock is a sock is a sock. They are super overthinking it. It is the technology that separates us and need to realize that the tech makes changes to the body. Um, you know, that's important to know that the sock is just the carrier. It's not the sock that's causing uh, issues unless they have an allergic reaction to, you know, spandex or nylon, which they would have experienced with some other sock if they had that before. So important to know that, you know, generally when neurology is changing and adjusting, as you said, there may be instances where um, they see uh, some changes, no different than if you went and did an incredible workout and you hadn't worked out in years, you're gonna be sore. Right, I see another thing too, somebody said, um, Emily says she doesn't have neuropathy but, and washed thoroughly but, but had the issue of burning. I had a customer with that too and, um, and they fought through it. It was whatever changes were happening in her body wearing the technology, her feet were burning, um, and they they swelled up, they got red, it was really ugly, and um, I offered to send her, I think I had sent her a wellness sock, I offered to send her an athletic sock, just to see if the different style of sock would help, and um, she stuck with it and just gradually tried to wear them some more, and now she loves them. So um, whatever changes her body was going through, she had the burning and the swelling and it, it completely looked, she sent me pictures, it totally looked like an allergic reaction. Um, the other thing is, again, 
have the conversations with your customers. Talk to them about, about their condition, about their medications, about their side effects, um, about any routine changes. There's a lot of things you can learn about what medications do to the body. Um, a big, big one that we deal with um, is gabapentin or Neurontin. And they use it, it's an anti-seizure medication, but they use it for a lot of neuropathy patients. <laughs> this is a horrible, terrible drug, and it actually prohibits nerves from regenerating. <laughs> so it's completely counterproductive for what we're trying to do for our clients. Um, so my goal with the technology and the PEM therapy is to get my clients down or off of their gabapentin because it puts them in a brain fog, it slows down their cognitive function, and um, it, it prohibits the body from healing. So learning what medications they're on, and I'm not saying you have to be a doctor, I'm not saying you have to study all the stuff, but just being aware of what some of the side effects can be can help you get your clients in the product for them as well. And sometimes the patches, even though the people will wear socks, sometimes getting them jump started with a patch for a couple of days really helps because then they can, they can get over some of that learning curve hump with the technology. And then maybe they're okay in socks. Um, and I send out a lot of free patches. I send a lot of patches out. I send a patch with every order I ship. Um, and I just had a new client. I sent an entire box of patches to for her and her son because I contacted her for her son and come to find out while I'm talking to her, she lets it slide that her adult disabled son she's taking care of, she has horrific RA and fibromyalgia. So to get them started I said let me send you a sample and I sent them a whole box of patches but that's a whole nother conversation um, but just having the conversations and being real with people to get them in the product or the combination of products to help them be successful and let them know that their their bodies can go through a learning curve and through an adjustment period um, the other big huge thing to ask your clients is how much water do they drink a day? Not coffee, not tea, not soda. <laughs> Hydration is gonna play a huge part with, with your cells and with your neurology and with your well being and how you feel and how you sleep. Dehydration is a really big problem and I'm guilty of it. I feel like a camel most days. I have to force myself to drink. But when people go through these changes and they feel like their body's trying to detox, if they're not hydrated, they definitely are gonna have more ill side effects than somebody that is more hydrated. So having that conversation with them and saying, look, you really need to make a conscious effort to drink the water to help yourself with the technology. Um, and most people are open to it. So whether they stick some lemon in it or whatever they need to do to get the water down, but most people don't realize that they're not hydrated. They think their coffee is enough to get them hydrated, and that's not going to work too well. Um, we talked a bit about the brain messages kind of getting there, being rewired. The, all the disconnect, we've, we've seen this now on the brain maps, that all of the disconnected parts are trying to configure and reconnect when you put the technology on. So with all of that happening, some people are going to feel a little dizzy or a little overwhelmed. And I know that happened with my husband when he first started wearing them after his stroke. He'd just look at me and go, I have to take them off. They're too much. Well, okay, what's too much? He couldn't tell me, but he just needed to take them off. His brain was trying to figure it all out and trying to work with itself again. Um, 
So just be aware of what's happening in your clients' bodies as they go through all of this and try to just let them know it's normal, it gets better, the technology absolutely works 99.9999% of the time. And even if the quote results aren't what they originally hoped for, at the end of the day, it is changing their brain function. Socks, insoles, patches, doesn't matter. It's just the delivery system. But when you answer questions, know in your heart and in your mind that the technology is working. It is doing something for your customer. And then it's just a matter of whether they're happy or not. Um, make sure we don't talk about general pain. You know, we can't claim that we can fix RA or fibromyalgia. We can't cure anything. We can't fix anything. You know, we all know, hopefully by now, we can claim the results with the diabetic neuropathy. That's pretty much the only medical claim we can make. Um, so just be careful on your wording. You can say, this person has found that, um, and use it, you, you know, you can quote the testimonial and make sure people know that it's a testimonial, um, but don't make claims of curing or helping specific diseases or disabilities. Um, so that's my two cents on how to stay compliant and how to help your customers and stay true to yourself. Help us all out by, if you don't know, ask, find out, let them know you'll get back to them. Um, I'm looking to see what other questions. How much water do you need to drink a day? It depends on your lifestyle. I live in South Florida. I work outside all day. I'm constantly sweating. I'm dehydrated usually. So I need to drink more water than somebody that's sitting at their desk. The other myth is when you're in the cold, you need just as much water because your body's working overtime to stay warm. You can Google it, find out how much water you need, um, but everybody's a little different, but it's a lot more than you think it is. We have a question there from, from uh, Edna, read Gabriella's, uh, Gabriella's comment that several people are experiencing leg cramping when they didn't have that issue before. How does the technology usage relate to that? Um, and so, you know, that's a great question, but again, it comes right back to a neurology adjustment, engaging different, you know, uh, muscles, opening up the, you know, the central nervous system to engage the product. So again, it comes back to, would you agree, Angela, to getting people to say, listen, we're not wanting you to have increased pain. We're wanting your body to balance. And during that balancing process, sometimes you will get some discomfort as other muscles start to engage. So there's a possibility that you could, uh, you know, incur some discomfort. So if that happens, you can't fight through it, certainly take the tech off. But I tell people, once that subsides, put the tech back on and time how long you can wear it each time. Because like prescription glasses or like progressive glasses, when eyes are adjusting and muscles are, you know, your eyes are getting sore or it's causing dizziness or whatever, it's simply because you're engaging muscles in the eye that, you know, weren't used before to improve the quality of your eyesight. So there is sometimes that curve. And I know when I, you know, first got my progressive lenses, I wanted to, you know, take them off and stomp on them. <laughs> because they, you know, it's frustrating. Um, and yet I refused to let them beat me. So every time I wore them, I could wear them longer each time until the point that the muscles in my eye had adjusted to the technology of the new prescription. And I was able to wear them with no discomfort. So it's just a matter, Edna, of coaching some people through it to get them through while their body adjusts. Does that make sense? Do you agree with that? Yeah, I've had I've had several clients that have the cramping. Um, 
but it's again it's just the body trying to rebalance itself and trying to it's going to use itself more efficiently but it still has to find that new balance so as it's trying to balance it's throwing everything off um, and whether that person has walked crooked for 30 years you just don't know so if they're putting weight differently on their feet that's going to affect their calves and their knees and all the way up to their hips um, just because they're actually more balanced yeah it's that kinetic chain you know where you're engaging more muscles because of how you're improved your balance right so um you know we talk about there's a lot of talk on here of hydration you know half the amount um in ounces or or um half your body weight in ounces so if you're 160 80 ounces i mean i try to drink a lot of water a day sometimes it's difficult um but uh, it's always good to do your best dr zach um bush says that most humans are dehydrated don't drink enough water so that's certainly you know uh, a good um thought process is to you know kind of coach and i think a lot of times angela we, we have these questions that come in and we want to be able to answer because we live in a world where people get instant gratification so we feel like we have to answer it right away and I think in order to be compliant and to um, guide people and coach people in the right direction, if you don't have the answer, it's your job um, as a sponsor or whatever to find out the right answer. And the right answer can be found. It may not be able to be found instantly, but it may be a situation where you have to talk to your customer or your new associate or whatever and say, be patient, I'll get an answer for you. Or encourage them to post it in the page. But we certainly want to be very, very careful not to give any medical advice, right, um, whatsoever, because um, we're not qualified unless we are a practitioner or unless we are a doctor to be able to give that advice for sure. So, any more questions that we can see on here? There was one question about feet getting cold when they first started wearing the socks. Has anyone else had this happen? Yes. Same thing as the feet getting hot. Um, yes, and every, everyone I've talked to, it gets better. Again, it's just a, whether it's a detox, a rebalance. It's just something that happens with some people, but it does get better. Yeah, we've had people, um, Louise Federico says, I've had a few customers complain that their feet got very smelly after wearing when they did not have that issue before. Detox. Well, I believe that uh, I've had that, but it does, uh, it does um, certainly uh, improve. So, um, as Kevin Dugay said, sometimes it takes a while for the body to readjust. And, you know, we know that you know, somebody I've heard, I've seen comments before, Angela, where somebody says, well, you know, some people got, you know, results from knee pain within a day or two, and I still have the knee pain, and it's been two weeks. And we know that when the body's in homeostasis, it's self-regulated. And we heard Dr. Mark Debrinkit describe it sort of in a way that if you all of a sudden found $250,000 hidden in your basement, but for months you'd been complaining about, oh, my front door jam needs replacing, um, the driveway needs repaving, the deck boards out the back are rotting, I got to get new deck boards, but you can't afford anything. So it continues to get worse and worse and worse. Now all of a sudden you found $250,000 and it's like, bingo! You attack what you think is most important first. It may be the driveway, it may be the deck boards. It may be the door jam that's blowing, letting cold air blow in. So like how you decide what's most important to repair first, so does your body when it's in homeostasis. So what happens is your brain is deciding what can help first. So your brain will eventually get to the areas that, um, that it sees uh, that need help. Um, and then it will on the other thing. That's why in some cases it's hardware 
um, for some people than others to, um, to do that. So does that make sense? I lost you, Angela. I'm here. There you are. <laughs> on screen. There you are. Yeah, so that's another thing to, to let people know is that, you know, the body decides what areas. You may have an issue that you don't even realize that your neurology is working on before it gets to, you know, A, the knee pain or B, the back pain or whatever it happens to be. So there is some coaching and education. That's why we have a 30-day money-back guarantee because people sometimes put our product on and say, hey, I've been wearing the product for 24 hours. I feel nothing. Right? And they're expecting a miracle. But neurology, even though the brain goes into position of homeostasis within seven seconds, your neurology doesn't repair itself necessarily that fast. So we have to encourage people and coach them through to make sure that they wear our technology compliantly every day for a certain period of time and help them and coach them through that. Make sense? Great. Um, let me just see, 12 new messages. Paul Austin, we cannot say detox, which we know. No people do not say detox. Um, so, brainstem regulates the digestive system, so it's possible for the body. It's asking, does the body detox, detox on HPT? Well, it's quite possible, but we can't say that. We don't have the studies to prove it, but it's quite possible. Um, but the, the trigger word there is the body is in homeostasis. The body is using itself more efficiently. The body is balanced or more balanced. Those are, those are things we can say instead of detox. Yeah. And the other thing is too, is I've had people that I've continued to encourage that have said, Hey, you know what? My feet are still cold or this is still happening. And I, I've, I've encourage them to say, listen, we did the balance assessment on you. You saw that something definitely happened. You saw and you felt you can't, you know, you, you can't unexperience what you experienced. So we know that's happening. And in some cases, I've had people as long as three months out go, oh my God, now all of a sudden I don't have that issue anymore. That's been three months time. But there's been some coaching involved. Trust me. So um, we just have to, as associates, learn to coach our people through, encourage them, because we know unequivocally, uh, and it will come out in the white paper by Dr. Thatcher, at how accurate and, and this technology works um, on every human being. So um, we won't keep anybody. We've gone to 40 minutes, and we know that the first 10 minutes, my apologies, was not recorded, so I hope we recovered the points the best we could. My bad. I apologize, everyone. Um, but um, if you have any questions or you feel you've missed anything on this call, please post it in our team page. I will have the recording up within the hour. And um, again, I want to thank everybody for taking the time to be on the call. Next week, we have scheduled Tracy Nachai from Winnipeg. She's going to be our trainer, and she's going to train um, on, uh, on uh, the brain and issues with the brain. Um, and uh, so we will put that post up and lots of time for everybody to uh, tag your teammates and so on. And I want to thank Angela on behalf of the field for taking this on such short notice. Um, I appreciate it, but I knew you could handle it. And you did <laughs> knock it out of the park and you did. And um, we will make sure that the recording goes up and we certainly appreciate your efforts this evening, and you've done a great job on, on handling questions. I've seen the, the, the posts and the comments on questions where you've answered and done a marvelous job, and you did a great job tonight, and I'm grateful, and we thank you on behalf of the field. So good night, everyone. We appreciate you being on the call. I'm going to unmute everybody here, and then we can all say our good and good night. Let me find some.
Goodbye and good night. Bye. 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 Bye.